everybody walked away. Yeah. Oh. So underneath us as we walk, yeah, so is geophysics, is this one of the lows kind of on the magnetics? Here. They belong to the same thing. It, uh, yeah. So the low, you are walking within the, within the low. Okay. Because uh, the low package is wider than the mineralized package, right? Yeah. The low is just telling you where is the fertile package. Yep. Within the fertile package, you follow your mineralization. So you start there, and the mineralization comes out right here. Really? So obviously we know we're not going to trench this whole thing. No, that would be that a will get serious field mining. <laughs> so that will get filled in by a couple of drill holes. Yeah, you can fence. You can put yeah, a fence so a hose along. Drilled that. Uh, one hole there just two days ago. Oh. <laughs> Cutting this package, what we just walked through. Oh, good, good, good. So you're hitting the zone all the time. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I don't think here in Sherlock we had a single hole that missed. And it's, uh, it's incredible the potential is here. Yeah. I was so excited to be here this day. Toby, Sherlock, 007, Watson. Footage we just saw was on the walk from Sherlock to Toby. As you can see, easterly and with a little bit of a decline. It's more to say about all this. Check the assays here. Try and compare this with the 9% number they reported at Nasigon Sud. Beautiful showing. This is the Sherlock. I've shown it to you in videos from the field. It was the first place we went. It was not the last. Note the scale of this property is very large. Geophysical features very interesting. Zooming in on the Sherlock area. Note the lake off to the right side. I use it to uh, identify the same area in Google Earth and then zoom out to show the whole project area, which is highly prospective. Now, let's go back to Toby. Not, uh, I won't be able to tell you much right now <laughs> until more work is done on that. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Well, it's a great science project, great business project well, I'm pretty too. Sure There's something here. Uh, will come out of this uh, <laughs> when this goes into mining. We now have to justify one percent copper, but that's because. Can I make it wet now? Yes. Yeah. Beauty of calcosite. I thought bornite was good. No. Not until you get exposed to calcosite. <laughs> So there's this also one, this one is loaded with grains of calco. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> calco and calco, uh, bornite and calcite. So here you can. The calco part is very easy to, to spot. Yes. If you look with the hand lens, you'll see the bornites as well. And then that last one meter down here at 120. Yeah. Good luck figuring out how that is a 1%. Yeah, from here, from yeah. 119. Like, that's not enough calco par, right? To do 1%. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little, yeah. you've got something circled, see, CPBO. Yeah. And there's maybe some other, but. Uh, but then, if you analyze it, it comes out at 1%. And you have eye silver as well. Yeah. You have like 5 point, yeah, 5, 6, yeah. 6 gram tons of silver. So all this is, the, it's your calco side playing tricks on you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. There's quite a lot of right? This yeah. yeah, but not enough, not enough for 1%. Yeah, there it is, 1.14. And then I'll show you drill hole 4. Same thing, mineralized. Uh, that is a few. So that's from, drill, uh, from 70 until. <laughs> Uh, is it? 70 until 85. 70, 85, that would be here. So it's this package. So look at the grades again. 0 0.4, 0 0.9, 1, 0.5, 0 0.7, 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5. Pretty good. This is the one you want. <laughs> <laughs> eh? Bornite, Kalkopyrite. Oh. It's got everything. Jeez. Malachite, the green, you know. Oxidized. <laughs> Where did they get this from? This is from uh, I don't think we can steal this one. No, no, I know, but <laughs> it's uh, marked out for elementary. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Oh, yeah, here we go. Too. Oh. This one's going to, wait a minute. When you use that, you see it. Yep. Very rare. We are starting to learn more that the gnaisic is starting to show up. 
you are in the sandstone. Oh, yeah. Toby is the first area. Um, you don't see them there. So this is going to be higher in grade. So sandstone is a good cut, right? Because it's a yeah, good from your okay. But uh, not see, much. See here, see, starting the shining shot. Yeah. But how does, that might affect your recovery and your meal and your processing plants? Well, the cox silicate unit, uh, we'll obviously learn about that variation, but in theory, cox silicate unit is not much different from the, the marble. Yeah, it's a dolomite. Yeah. Uh, if it was ignited, then yes, totally every, uh, the work index changes right away. Lots, lots. Is some bigger piece here as well? Yeah, we're here. The water. And they're all together, right? right? Yes. They yeah. just added. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with this one, too. <laughs> so the history behind this one. So as we were going a little bit more to the east and keep extending that zone that we drilled in the winter, we wanted to, to cut that zone uh, as early as possible. So we kept pushing all the way to the back. And that, that's as far as the bulldozer could go. So we told him, okay, start making a nice flat platform. And just as well, uh, while he was making the platform, he started pulling those rocks, breaking the, 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 the outcrop, basically. And that's what started coming out. So as you can see, the drill hole started in mineralization. Well, that's not fair. If it's uh, the only one you turn over, that's plus mineralization. <laughs> <laughs> All of them are, but that's the nicest one. And this hole right beside us? So yeah, so that's the hole. That's hole 14? 14, yeah. 14. Wonderful. So all those drill holes, uh, all all those driller results are coming out. So. Okay. Thank you. How far are we from three, and then with uh, 50 meters, 100 meters? Three is uh, meters. 50 meters est, and uh, 50 yep. meters. Uh, yep. This one is 50 meter down. Sure. So uh, south, south, and uh, west. And what do you think about this dipping, the the topography here, uh, going down the hill? Uh, Basically, you'll need to go down and drill from there. Yeah. Sure. But topographically, you're going to start below the sequence, so that's why we wanted to stay on this plateau and drill from here. Yeah. But once you put it all in the cross section, then you plan your drill hole from there, and at what angle you need to do it to to get the. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's just you adjust to it. Yeah. But yeah, you'll adjust right. to it based on the cross section already. Of and it. do you think that sequence? You say below the sequence. Do you think it would have gone away? And well, no. So we know that here it's already mineralized. So yep. We don't know where it starts. Another 10 meters from, from here. This or is the question. 20, eh? And uh, it goes until where? So look, I mean, the drill hole visually was mineralized, roughly uh, 100 meters or something yeah. like that. Uh, so very similar to drill hole three. Yeah. Very similar <laughs> to drill hole three, which you just saw. Well, and it makes me think about if to have some exposure along that slope would be nice. Uh, oh, maybe. Someday. Maybe. <laughs> now it's covered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how uh, discoveries are made. Yeah. A lot of work. A lot, yeah. a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see Kauko showing in the rocks when you break it, though, hey? Yeah, you don't find a mine. Kauko Bar and Borne, it's just. It's oh, quite, the purple there. Yeah, very yeah. clear now, right? That's, uh, that's classic. Uh, yeah, that's nice. Uh, that's classic uh, stratiform. <laughs> Stratiform mineralization. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. On to the next one. Okay. We'll start buzzing as soon as I get close to this. Yeah, you. <laughs> you got some updates pending, eh? Some emails. Uh, yeah. Wow. Home sweet home. Wait, right. right. exactly. it's going to be a dry camp. No moves. No. No. Nope. No. Yeah, just That's right. Want. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we can go all the way to on the sandy beach, and he's like, no, uh, that plane, you 
you need the key. Otherwise, everybody has to jump in the water. I was like, no, I don't think we're gonna make people jump in the water. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, we'll build it. <laughs> yeah. But the guys, they, it's forest guys, they know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. They've been living and working in the forest all their yeah. life. Okay, guys, we need to, be, uh, to build this. So one of the guys <laughs> that worked in the outfield is like, okay, I know exactly the size and everything. You, you knew what to they, do it. They, yeah. they built this, the guy lands, he's like, oh my God. Of the pilot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that wasn't there last time I passed in this area <laughs> uh, so uh, that's very good. very good solid team yeah. Alain knows how to run projects he yeah. is well, just your team of geos you can have them jump in the water they're used to that <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> but when you bring your investors here oh, we, uh, we had uh, in the three days we had a couple of women as well so yeah. I'm like and I don't think Jean wants to jump in the water right? not so much yeah <laughs> Uh, but no, look, uh, Alain, in terms of uh, logistics and looking after uh, moving a project and operations, he's spectacular. He was one of the geos that discovered Eleanor. Oh, okay. He's one of the five that received the Discover the PDAC award for the discovery of Eleanor. He discovered the Roberto uh, yeah, outcrop. The showing? Yeah, the showing uh, <laughs> Roberto, That's that one is his. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the discovery outcrop. Yeah, exactly. That one is his. <laughs> So, and then he stayed uh, with the project all the way from the small team that they were, what, five, ten people? Yeah. All the way, a couple of hundred people and how many drill rigs and all that. He ran the entire drilling program. So he knows what it is being involved with a project that goes from a few people, a little bit more, yeah. to a big camp, <laughs> to transition to a major. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and you need to do it properly. <laughs> totally, yeah. You want to keep track of all that. And how did you get them to join you? So Alain was with Gio Omega, uh, VP of Exploration, uh, working yep. on the Monville Carbonata deposit. When I joined Gio Omega, uh, first as business development and a year later as uh, became president and CEO. So he was already there and we fit very well together. We think uh, in a similar way. Uh, we operate uh, very, uh, very well together. So when we were looking at what to, how to restructure Geomega in a way that it will be the technology company that it is today for the rare processing and separation before it goes towards uh, the mine, uh, we said, okay, well, one thing is we have to take all the exploration assets, put them in a separate company. Yeah. So uh, that's where that's how I put Alain into Kintavar, uh, and so the entire technical team transferred from Geomega into here. And uh, so that way the technical team, if needed, the knowledge we kept it, uh, Montviel will be worked in the future. Yeah, so the yes. team is there. They sp they drilled, can't you remember, uh, 30,000 meters on Montviel. They know that carbonatite better than anybody. So why would you want to give that knowledge away? That's right, yeah. So you need to keep that. So we was, kept that. Was Kintavar a new pubco? So Kintavar was uh, uh, basically a spin out from Geomega. Yeah. So uh, a we, new entity, clean. It's a, it's a new entity. We it was uh, an RTO with a okay. uh, with a with a shell, with a CPC uh, out of Vancouver actually. Yep. Um, and called Black Springs Capital, uh, and as part of the transaction as well, there was an amalgamation with a private company that we absorbed, uh, the, that owned this property, uh, or there were actually several companies, small private companies that owned chunks of this property. Yeah. And it was owned by different prospectors or yeah. different groups of entrepreneurs, very smart guys, but they are in the logging industry. Mining and exploration is not their industry. So they wanted to move it forward and we started, did our due diligence. We liked what we saw. So we uh, structured the transaction, a clean transaction. Uh, so we uh, bought the entire property, um, uh, consolidated the whole thing for $1.5 million in uh, shares of Kintavar. Wow. Uh, no royalties. Oh, clean, uh, yes, clean, clean, clean. And uh, the main objective was uh, like, I, I, uh, you need to keep everything together. Those yeah. guys are great and they they know the area. And I think that's one of the most important things. You want local support. It's, there's, it's one thing to say, it's like, yes, the locals support me versus when the locals own 25% of the company. They own the 25%, yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> since then, uh, they've been buying more on the market, they've been investing. Great. In the re most recent round, uh, they invested another $500,000. Uh, since the beginning of Kintavar, 
uh, the local population from here invested two million dollars uh, <laughs> into Kintavar. Oh, wow. So you know, it's yeah. it's, in, it's 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 entrepreneurs. Yeah. They know they know what it takes. Uh, <laughs> they just they didn't have necessarily the technical knowledge. There were a couple of prospectors in there, but I mean, a prospector can only find showings and uh, advance it to a certain point. Yep. Uh, well, and if you have something that doesn't fit the mold or is a little challenging for yeah. the audience and no, 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 that doesn't exist here. No, no, no. Oh, well, look, that's what Nasigan was. Everybody's like, oh, how come everybody missed Nasigan? <laughs> because it's like, well, they had a channel of one meter at like 4% copper or something like that. <laughs> uh, that's what they had as a result, uh -huh. which is fine. But what is it? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> what there? Yeah. No, nobody knew what, what it was. Just crazy uh, prospectors. It wasn't. <laughs> uh, write it off. It wasn't until we actually sat down and started trenching Sherlock, and we were like, "Oh, Sherlock <laughs> is not just a little scar and deposit like Noranda thought it was." <laughs> and then we started connecting Sherlock to Nasigan, and we were like, "Oh, it's the same thing." So um, ah. I've got two major uh, str stratigraphic horizons: one here and one 15 kilometers to the north. Yeah. Uh, and they are exactly the same thing. So you'll see today Sherlock on surface and you'll, you'll walk to Nasigon surface and you'll be like, oh, it's the exact same thing. Yeah. Versus in the past when they didn't know what was here, this was all covered, yeah. uh, no trenching. Uh, you couldn't put it together. You're like, ah, if it's a scar and it's not good, yeah. but it's not really a scar. It doesn't really look like a 100% scar. <laughs> so what is it? But yeah. now once you put a model around it and you it took some time for people to understand that it's a strata from copper, Mm -hmm. uh, even when we start showing the, the evidence. Yeah. And when did you came up with this uh, this theory, the, the model? Str the strata from copper uh, theory started forming towards the end of last summer. Uh, we started trenching uh, with the idea, okay, we know there is a scar deposit, that's what Noranda identified there, so that's what we'll, uh, that's what we'll find. Yeah, we'll start with that. Uh, and once you trench it, you're like, but wait a second, where are all the chemical reactions that you'll usually see uh, in the scar deposit? Uh, where is uh, that? that uh, gradient uh, of precipitation and the sulfide coming out and all that yeah. you don't see any of that there are no uh, all the mineralization is primary it's not a mineralization associated with uh, no no that one we turn on the next one um, yeah. uh, it's all associated with the original precipitation of the fluid within the sedimentary strata yeah. <laughs> uh, then plus we started seeing how it's folded in the trench and you could even find some crystals of calcopyrite that got folded <laughs> together with the mineralization. Yeah. So it's primary <laughs> mineralization, yeah. The, exactly. Yeah. So you're like, okay, that's not a scar, that, uh, that's not no, a fluid it's that not came. There's no metas metasomatism here at all. Yeah. <laughs> so putting all that together and then our consultant, Michel Gauthier, who is a very... Okay, you work with Michel, yeah. Yeah, Michel Gauthier is a very experienced yeah. uh, metamorphic uh, geologist. Uh, and uh, and he was familiar with um, with Nasigan. Uh, really? He worked on it in the past. Wow. And, and he's like, guys, I think it's almost the same thing. Let's go there. So we jump in the cars, we drive there. It's already part of our property. Yeah. Uh, let's make sure we don't fall. No. Nice. Cool. Um, and uh, when we get there, and we're like, absolutely, it's the exact same thing. So then. Uh, we said, okay, well, look, Sherlock is more advanced. We have IP surveys. We have uh, much more detailed magnetic uh, data. Yeah. Uh, so let's work with that. So we finished all the trenching in the area. Uh, channel sampling gave very good results of, uh, I think it was uh, around 20 meters or so of uh, 0.6 or something like that right now. It's the channels from last summer. Nice. Uh, and we were like, okay, that's great. Good now start. let's let's drill underneath it and see what it is. Because Ooh. if it is folded, you'd see the same fold, re, uh, kind of yep. refolded. Yep. Uh, the entire same strata refolded, and you'll you'll most likely intersect it. And if it's folded tight enough, <laughs> you'll you'll start getting a structural thickening. So that structural thickening was the important part of the puzzle that we managed to demonstrate with the first drill results of uh, December and January drilling. Uh -huh. So by itself, uh, the package seems to be just everything fits together as of exactly. Yeah. <laughs> December and January drilling too. Wonderful to hear you say it. Uh, winter drilling is actually so. Like